I love trains, and this promises to be informative and fun. In the early part of the 20th century, there was a lot of logging in the Smoky Mountains, before the days of the National Park. This is Townsend, and the lumber mill used to sit right here. And there's a train engine. This engine had quite a career beyond the lumber company. Dang it. It's really quite a thing to see one of these up close. Such a piece of American history. You can almost feel its power and might. Well, you can't climb on it, but you can walk up this little staircase to it. I reckon that'll have to do. I'm always surprised to see a wooden floor in something like this. It must have been quite an experience. Can you see up inside? When I was a kid, I always wanted an electric train, but I've never been interested in the modern diesel variety. It's steam locomotives all the way for me. Absolutely nothing carries exactly the romance of a big old steam train. They also have this log loader. Well, technically this is a railroad crossing. <laughs> All right, so we approach what I initially thought was the museum. This building is closed to the public. Huh. This shop building is a replica of the original Townsend locomotive shop. Inside is the boardroom as well as the space to work on various restoration projects. This building is closed to the public. Where's the museum? Is this the museum? Like... Like there? Oh, right. Oh, yeah. I'm blind. You're blind or you're blind? A little of both. What did you say? Blind. Portable steam engine. Also a steam train. Powered portable sawmills.
That's pretty cool. A little diorama for the. I've never seen a diorama outside before. I have at Disney World. Oh, you're right. At Epcot. <laughs> huh. Wonder what this is a model of. I don't know. I think it's more of a more of a metaphor. A metaphor? Like there was railroad and there was mountains. Didn't look like this, but there was railroad and mountains. Do so you think it's just a metaphor? Yeah. Where did all those people go? <laughs> So this was the original Wall and Depot. Depot. So the junction of Little River, Southern Railroads for almost four decades. This was where passengers could catch, uh, catch or change trains. Townsend Mill would trade cars or cut lumber with the Southern Railway to be shipped around the country. So that's a museum that's a gift shop. Oh, yeah, I guess so. Museum? Gift shop. But it's in the original building. That's pretty cool. It's part of the Tennessee Heritage Trail. Yeah. Entrance. I think this might be the entrance. Inside is a ton of stuff. Smell in here. Lots of old wood. If I were to shoot every exhibit, this would be a thousand hours long. So I just hit some highlights. It's the old pictures that always gets me. Images long past, but you can get a glimpse. Remember we had a question about slavery in the mountains at the old slave cemetery? As the population increased and the average size of farms declined, there was a large potential labor force in the mountains that was eager to abandon farming and work for cash wages. So maybe it started out with bigger farms and that's where we were thinking. Oh, the, gotcha. Yeah, like the slavery part. Like maybe they worked on these bigger farms that we don't know about because we only have started seen... looking at the post-Civil War hard scrabble era. Huh, yeah, makes sense. I have to research that more. Oh, Robbie would like this. These nails have dates on them. Ooh. I think that's what that means, date. Nails have got numbers. Yeah. It's interesting. I haven't seen that before. But they're round. They're not like square. Well, if it was after 1870, then. Or that, 18... one, that one nails got round? Yeah. Oh, there's Grandma. You Can saw you Grandma. What's Life in these mountains has changed a lot since the 1930s. The logging industry was a boon for people who needed work, but devastating to the land. Then and now, logging leaves land scarred. But on the subject of trains, I've often wondered if there's a place where you can see where the tracks used to run.
As it always is in these museums, I am overwhelmed by all the information. I have to hand it to them. They've packed a lot of stuff into this small, small space. Townsend had a mill, apparently. Oh. Was it the tannery? I'm kind of slow. That was the mill that actually sat on this site, per the historic marker. I don't think so. Oh. The city and Townsend thrived until the Great Depression. Yeah. A lot of things never recovered after that. Some residents who stayed in Townsend opened tourist-related enterprises and catered to visitors on their way to the Smoky Mountain National Park. So, like, building the park and shutting down logging, like, really changed lives. I love these old photographs. I know. When Stacy said you can't just log, look at this. This is what she was referring to. It's really astounding to me how much the Smoky Mountains have recovered. This wasn't that long ago. It's just devastating to the land. Not ecologically speaking. These old pictures are the closest thing we have to a time machine. It's funny how they're like nostalgic for this. It's almost like it's nostalgia for this time of logging <laughs> <laughs> and railroads. But that was like devastating to the environment. Well, you know, it's history, so it's like, it's keeping in memory sometimes how bad things, you know, were. I mean, it's, I guess it's important to know. Those who don't know history are doomed to repeat it. Hopefully this lesson is learned. And if logging itself wasn't bad enough. The mill burned down. And here is probably the best thing to ever happen to this area. National Park Conversion. The National Park Conversion was a double-edged sword. It saved the land, but everyone lost their land through eminent domain. In Elkmont, Part of it still stands near Gatlinburg. Elkmont stood until very recently when the National Park Service decided to return the land to the forest. I believe a few structures still stand. Coming up. I am so glad I have now heard about the Hobo Convention.